Welcome back, readers. Today we are reading The Tale of Despero, Chapter 42, The Rest of the Thread. The Threadmaster was sitting atop his spool of thread, swinging his tail back and forth and eating a piece of celery. Well, look here, he said when he saw Despero. Would you just look at that? It's the mouse who loved a human princess back from the dungeon in one piece. The old threadmaster would say that I didn't do my job well, that because you are still alive. I must have tied the thread incorrectly, but it is not so. And how do I know it is not so? Because the, the thread is still around your neck. He nodded and took a bite of his celery. I need the rest of it, said Despero. The rest of what? Your neck? The rest of the thread. Well, I can't just hand it over to any old mouse, said the threadmaster. They say red thread is special, sacred, though I myself, after having spent so much time with it, know it for what it is. What is it, said Despero. Thread, said the threadmaster. He shrugged and took another loud bite of celery. Nothing more, nothing less. But I pretend, friend, I pretend. And what, may I ask, do you intend to do with this thread? Save the princess. Ah, yes, the princess, the beautiful princess. That's how this whole story started, isn't it? I have to save her. There is no one but me who can do it. It seems to be that way with most things. No one to do the really disagreeable jobs except oneself. And how exactly will you use a spool of thread to save a princess? A rat has taken her in the dun and hidden her in the dungeon. So I have to go back to the dungeon. And it is full of twists and turns and hidden chambers. Like a maze, said the threadmaster. Yes, like a maze. And I have to find my way to her, wherever she is hidden. And then I have to lead her back out again. And the only way to do that is with the thread. Gregory the jailer ch tied a rope around his ankle so that he would not get lost. As the mouse said this, he shuddered, thinking of Gregory and his broken rope dying, lost in the darkness. I, said Despero, I will use the thread. The threadmaster nodded. I see, I see, he said. He took a meditative bite of celery. You, friend, are on a quest. I don't know what that is, said Despero. You don't have to know. You just have to feel compelled to do the thing, the impossible, important task at hand. Impossible, said Despero. Impossible, said the threadmaster. Important, he said chewing his celery and staring somewhat past Despero, and then suddenly he leapt off his spool. Who am I to stand in the way of a quest, he said. Roll her away. I can have it? Yes, for your quest. Despero put his front paws up and touched the spool. He gave it an experimental push forward. Thank you, he said, looking into the eye of the threadmaster. I don't know your name. Hovis. Thank you, Hovis. There's something else. Something that belongs with the thread. Hovis went into a corner and came back with a needle. You can use it for protection. Like a sword, said Despero. Like a knight would have. Yes, said Hovis. He gnawed off a length of thread and used it to tie the needle around Despero's waist. Like so. Thank you, Hovis, said Despero. He put his right shoulder against the spool of thread and pushed it forward again. Wait, said Hovis. He stood up on his hind legs, put his paws on Despero's shoulders, and leaned in close to him. Despero smelled the sharp, clean scent of celery as the threadmaster bent his head, took hold of the thread upon Despero's neck and his sharp teeth, and pulled on it hard. You see, you're not going into the dungeon because you have to. You're going into the dungeon because you choose to. There, said Hovis, when the piece of thread broke and dropped to the ground. 
Now you're free. You see, you're not going into the dungeon because you have to. You're going because you choose to. Yes, said Despero, because I am on a quest. The word felt good and right in his mouth. Quest. Say it, reader. Say the word. Quest out loud. It is an extraordinary word, isn't it? So small and yet so full of wonder, so full of hope. Goodbye, said Hovis, as Despero pushed the spool of thread out of the Threadmaster's hole. I have never known a mouse who has made it out of the dungeon, only to go back into it again. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye, mouse among mice.